it's really fascinating actually hearing all that. I think there'll be a lot of people who are watching this probably a little bit angry that MotoGP hasn't introduced these kind of things sooner because we have a lot of discussion this year, Keith being one of them, but you know, it was the concussion debate as well. We've had that time and time again, you know, and we know they have certain protocols and the scat method, but you still see riders somehow passing that and and then you, they clearly sh- probably shouldn't have passed it or somehow have got through it. But then you think if you've got this indicator in your ear, like you have in Formula One and IndyCar, that should give a, a pretty clear cut definition. So it's clear that you, you're obviously, you've, you've got the technology and you're capable of doing a lot of things. What what would you like to see implemented going forward, in particular into MotoGP? I know you can't reveal a lot of things, but what would you personally like to see uh, implemented and, and what can you do for, for, from all aspects? Well, I, th- I believe that um, integrated different components and different parts that we can provide, I I see it's an advantage uh, point for MotoGP, but also for many other championships, um, because we have implemented the flag pilots for the first time. But as we were discussing before, fl- fl- flag pilots is one thing of the system, is one part of the system. But already having the possibility to show um, the same flag, the same information to the driver dash, it's already something else. Um, for example, when I, uh, as a driver, when I enter a sector and I see that the panel is flashing yellow, um, but maybe I am looking somewhere else, uh, as soon as, the, as I approach the panel, also the, the bike or the car will start flashing with the same flag as the panel. So I have a second indication of this. And even more, if I have uh, the, the ear plug accelerometer in my ear and can connect this to, to the bike or to the car. And I can also get an audio warning, an audio warning that is telling me, look, there is a yellow flag. There is a safety car. Yeah. There is whatever message. And it's already a third indication of something is going, is, is happening on the track. And so if I miss the panel, if I miss the dash, I still have the audio indication. And if I miss the three of them, maybe I still have, in any case, marshals waving their flags, the standard flags. So um, putting all this thing together, for sure, is helping uh, the, the drivers and the riders understanding what is going on um, ahead uh, of where, what they are approach, approaching. Uh, the world of, of uh, bikes um, Let's say we are entering in this world because we always always been working with cars in motorsport, but now we are also approaching the, the bikes, not only uh, MotoGP, and is something we are learning as well. It's uh, it's I, I must say it's a completely different world than than cars. What is uh, better for a driver in the in your project over the last 15 years i mean is it a visual or is it an audio thing what gets the best reaction gets the best result from a from somebody that's racing with that intensity you know is, is it is it the visual or is it a, a audio or is it just a combination of both is is are our ear senses better than our eye senses which is which is the best way of giving an indication to a driver or a rider well i would say that uh when riding a bike or driving a car uh, we uh, tend to use our eyes uh, for mostly everything. I mean, um, the ears, probably I would listen to the, to, to the engine uh, revving up or down, but it, I'm not using my ears uh, in terms of uh, senses. Uh, my eyes are always focused on what I'm doing, so many drivers don't even blink once um so they use their vision uh, as the main uh, main sensor have there been tests um have there been tests done to to work that combination out have you actually gone that far technically into what is best what I can, the best combination um i i to be honest i am not sure because in formula one for example uh drivers prefer different solutions mm. i mean uh, all of, all the drivers uh, must have a, a visual wo- warning on the on the dash, uh, but it's up to the 
teams or to the driver to have audio warning as well. I know for sure that in Formula 2, they do have audio warnings as well. Um, for virtual safety car, uh, they get a beep in, uh, in their, uh, their radio, in their ears. Um, and uh, I, it's, it's, uh, it's an, I mean, in my 10 years of experience of the system, I really can say um, drivers are becoming also used to this technology and they are expecting it. Or, or let's say, sorry, I used the wrong word. They, they notice conditions, a different condition on the track. Uh, then respecting it, it's a different thing. Uh, but indications are there, and uh, I have never heard anyone saying, I haven't seen the flag, um, if the flag was there, or I didn't hear, or I didn't see. Um, so this known feedback for me is very important. Luca, just, just rewinding a bit, you've explained very well the ways of communicating with the riders, but how about actually detecting when the accident occurs? Do you, do you still rely on a human to spot an accident, to press a button, or do you think there'll be ways in the future of, we've seen with the airbag or with some sort of sensors, to make that decision quicker so that you can light up the panels quicker, you can alert the riders and drivers quicker? What are these sort of options there? Human presence is still... Um, I, I mean... Uh, let's say replacing humans with artificial intelligence, I think it's, uh, it's a big step. Uh, the human brain is still capable of understanding the gravity of the situation or um, can even anticipate. Um, I remember a couple of years ago in uh, Hungary, um, I think it was Peretz, uh, sliding the last corner uh, during free practice or qualify and the, uh, he was sliding towards the barrier and even before crashing into the barrier the marshal already pressed the yellow button and you could see from the onboard camera that when he hit the barrier the panel after was already flashing green this means that the marshal already already knew that he was going to crash um in using artificial intelligence is, is definitely uh, possible. We already provide uh, accident information to race control, to medical car um, for intervention. And for example, the famous Grosjean accident in Bahrain um, last year, the moment he crashed with the car, the uh, accident information was received both in race control and to the medical car, which was approaching behind. Um, so everything done by a human will probably take maybe a, a second or two, but with the uh, uh, artificial intelligence technology, you are talking about 100, 200 milliseconds. Um, so in this case, is really helpful. Uh, but there are some conditions where... Um, the, the marshals are still more re reliable in terms of uh, deciding when to uh, activate a flag or what kind of flags to activate. Also because there are different rules. Basic rule, uh, a car stops outside the, uh, the, the white lines, so uh, borderline, that's a yellow flag. If the car stops in between these two lines, that's a double yellow flag. So with artificial intelligence, you can say, okay, the car is within this, this part of the track or, or outside the track, um, which is still feasible because, in, uh, for example, in Formula 1, we do have 30 to 40 centimeters accuracy for uh, um, GPS position. Um, but um, if we are in Monte Carlo, for example, and or... Uh, Sochi or Singapore, where it's kind of difficult to um, identify the, with that precision the position of the car, the marshal is still uh, capable of, of uh, uh, deciding going to double yellow, yellow flag. Also, a driver is coming out from the car, the actual flag should change from yellow flag to double yellow flag. So these are still part of the uh, uh, marshal job. 
So even with all this technology, we believe that the marshals are still very important. Uh, you can have 20 CCTV cameras and you have one person in race control watching all these screens. Uh, but it, I tell you, it's quite easy to miss something that maybe a car going outside from the view of a CCTV camera. If you don't have a marshal lighting up his flag, you probably won't see it half of the time. It's going to be a, a it's all about that balance, isn't it? Eventually of, of AI and, and human uh, resources, isn't it? That's going to be trying to find the sweet, the sweet spot, I suppose, at the end of the day of, of implementing both and getting the best out of both. And then then you've hit the home run, I suppose. Um, but look, Luca, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to have you onto the show and, and get a, a little insight into about what, what you and EM Motorsport have done and, and what you're doing now with MotoGP. Of course, your first year uh, in bikes and using all that all that technology that you've implemented into Formula One and, and coming into bikes. And uh, I think I can speak for both Keith and, P- Keith and Pete when I say we really want to see this technology implemented um, as soon as possible, I think. And so we, we, we will be watching... Uh, uh, with great intrigue to see how you get on over the winter and, and looking ahead to, to the seasons uh, next next year and beyond. But uh, Luca De Angelis from EM Motorsport, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you very much for the invitation. Good luck, <laughs> Luca, with everything. Honestly, hope you really get on. Thank you. Good luck. Well, yes, thanks to uh, Luca for joining us. And Keith, is a, a really good insight, isn't it, into actually you know how it all works from behind the scenes. But also, it is interesting how... That te- the technology is clearly there, but there's something blocking it from being implemented straight away. Because you think you can, you know, if you want to stick something in a rider's ear, that should be fairly straightforward. I, um, you know, my frustration on this subject, particularly on the concussion head injury thing, because I know that they've had these sensors in IndyCar for some time. Because I used to cover IndyCar. You know, and, and when they hit a barrier in IndyCar, it's like, I think momentarily, split second, they pull something like 200G, something ridiculous out of this, off the scale. Um, and so the having that measurement to see what you your body has gone through is a very, very important thing. And we've, we've, we've missed a trick in MotoGP, Moto2, Moto3. The, the, the premier classes don't have that technology as available as it should be to all. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not a one man, one deal thing. It, it should be across the board. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to see, I just feel like we're dragging our feet a bit. You know, it, it, it must come down at the end of the day to funding um, as well. Integrating it, of course, I mean, I'm not party to, to how technically difficult this is, but when you see the innovations that Dorna have managed to come up with for our television viewer, um, they've got to surely be able to come up with something um, just as technically but challenging as 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 that when it comes to rider safety. Um, and I I I felt for some time, you know, obviously I'm in a, an easier position now to be able to voice my opinion, whereas I couldn't do when I was broadcasting with MotoGP previously. But now I can just say whatever I feel like saying. And genuinely, I think that we are behind the game. I've had conversations with high ups in MotoGP, and I've been stunned by the response to it, to be frank, that, that you know, that, that, that they have not got behind these things, that there isn't somebody from the high up campaigning. I mean, it's a, they're aware. They're, everyone's aware of what's going on. Everyone's aware of what's available, but don't seem to be really putting it very high up the priority list. For me, the the decelerometer or whatever it is, I, I don't even know what the technical word for it is, but an in-ear piece of equipment that measures the rate of retardation when you bang your bonce on the floor, that is a critical piece of information. And it, and it also takes out the, the guesswork from a, from a medic's point of view. I mean, many medics I've spoken to, they can shine a light in your eye. They can do all this. They don't know whether you've been concussed or not been concussed. They can't. There's guesswork, even for a, for a trained doctor, unless you've had a massive bang on the head and you, you know, you, you're dilated and everything's, everything's, every bell's ringing. But the fact is, is that to take that decision away from them, I'm sure the medics would be quite happy to, to see that particular decision taken away because they must take a massively deep breath when they pass somebody fit, knowing that they've had a clout on the bonds, um, but they haven't been able to diagnose con- concussion at that point. But And if you've got you know, a, a, a headline rate at which that's it, you're out of the next week or 14 days of racing because you have your head's decelerated at this amount, um, it takes it away. There's no guesswork anymore. It's it's that's it. You're you're done. Um, 
And I just think that would be a better system. One of the quotes I remember getting was, what, you want us to test everybody? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, head injury is something that, that, that people are beginning to to realise how serious it is. And secondary concussions, you don't have to be knocked out. You don't have to be seeing stars to be concussed. It, you could be concussed with a fairly minor um, clout to the head if it's at the right angle and at the, the right rate. So, you know, more must be done, I feel, in that department. But it's good to see Luca and his team have got that technology already. And uh, it'd be fantastic if it gets used at, at our premier classes. Absolutely. Well, uh, that just about brings us uh, to the end uh, of uh, the Crash Moto GP podcast for this season. We will be back for a special Christmas show, Christmas jumpers and all. Keith has threatened the antlers as well, so uh, that's good going to be definitely one to tune in on um but in the meantime a great thank you as well to uh, luca for joining us from em motorsport and thank you dear listener and watcher for listening and watching all the way through the year it's meant the absolute world to have you subscribe to us and leaving your reviews please continue to do that and if there's anything you'd like us to do going into the new year don't hesitate to uh, send your recommendations below and we'll see what we can do uh, but in the meantime you can keep up to uh, keep up with everything moto gp related related on uh, crash.net uh, and any questions still send them in we'll try and get them answered when and wherever we can on the crash moto gp socials and please don't forget to leave us a review on whatever podcast platform you listen to it really helps us uh, with the algorithm and all that kind of thing but for myself harry benjamin from keith ewan and uh, pete mclaren we'll see you at christmas bye-bye